This is the denominator. It is a very simple uh, machine containing 11 counters, each with three digits and one button. One counter for each denomination of US currency, from one cent up to $20. This would be used for adding up pay slips. On this side there's this uh, space, there should be a, a shelf or table here that could hold a stack of pay slips. You'd uh, go through them, enter them all into the machine and at the end you'd then know how many of each coin and bill you'd need to take out of the bank to pay your staff. This machine was made by the Denominator Adding Machine Company. It was founded in 1914 by Frank H. Morse in Brooklyn. Apparently he designed this machine, but I've only been able to find uh, a patent for it that was filed uh, six years later. And that patent is by William Cook and Joseph Levine. Frank Morse was the witness on that patent. So I'm not entirely sure if Frank Morse designed this or somebody else. But anyway, the, that's, this company was founded in order to uh, make this machine. The address here, 224 to 226 Shepherd Avenue, that address is shared with the American numbering machine company. They made uh, stamps for uh, stamping the current date that uh, libraries would use to stamp the uh, date in a book. And they also made other kinds of uh, counters for printing uh, batch numbers and things like that. I don't know if there was any real connection between those two companies except for sharing the premises and presumably the factory equipment. In around uh, 1935 or so, the company uh, moved over to uh, Woodbury, Connecticut, and uh, they're, st they're still based there today. They still make counters, lab counters and such. The, uh, yeah, that place, Woodbury, is very close to Bristol, Connecticut, and that's where Vida Root is based. And it seems there's also some connection between the denominator company and Vida Root. Vida Root also uh, used to make counters and things like that, and they still make uh, uh, petrol pumps and uh, other kinds of measuring equipment. Uh, yeah, this machine, it's, uh, yeah, it's very simple, yeah, you just press the button and it increases, increments each counter. And you can clear it by turning this wing nut. Just turn it all the way until everything is on zero. The wing nut has a, a serial number on it, the number is 1940. I've only been able to find two other serial numbers, one around 2200 and one around 2900. So that suggests that maybe about 4000 of these machines were made. It's hard to tell how uh, long it was in production for. It started of course in around 1914-1915 uh, and presumably went on into the uh, 1920s. But uh, by that time they started making uh, other kinds of counters, not just for the currency, but uh, also general lab counters. Um, maybe I can uh, open this up and show you the inside. I'll have to take off all the buttons. There we go. 
and yeah now unscrew these four screws that keep it on the uh, wooden board this particular uh, denominator has seen quite a lot of use it's uh, it's well worn around and uh, as you'll see it also has been repaired inside a few times so it must have been quite a an important machine to whoever owned it at the time so here we go let's lift this off it has a, a glass uh, cover that is stuck down with some uh, yeah, black tape because otherwise it might just slide off here's the mechanism the mechanism is very simple it has this actuator with a that's spring loaded with three teeth, a long tooth on the right and a short tooth on the left. And those teeth uh, engage with a gear on the left of each number wheel. But the... Uh, yeah, w when it moves, at first only the, the long tooth that drives the unit wheel uh, engages with a gear. But uh, one of the uh, holes, when it's on, when it's on nine the uh, the the next next time that it goes into a slightly deeper hole allowing the middle tooth to also engage with the gear it didn't do that this time there you go so when the uh, When, when the unit wheel is on uh, zero, that uh, actuator goes slightly deeper so, so that it engages with the next wheel. And if the middle wheel is on zero as well, it's even deeper. As you can see, the, there's a weird spring here. Apparently the, the, the small spring that keeps the actuator pressed against the wheels is broken on this one and it's hard to get to it's a kind of coil spring inside a bit like a uh, on a clothes peg but uh, yeah you can't can hardly get to it so somebody drilled a couple of holes in here and put a, another piece of wire in order to, to make this uh, this spring back You can also see there's a small bracket over this part here. It seems that these wheels for the uh, five cent uh, counter, those have worn out a bit and gotten a bit loose. And uh, yeah, this bracket was put on to, to tighten it up a bit. Oh yeah, and there's a, a small washer put in here to to keep the cover slightly away from uh, from from the glass because yeah the the glass cover pushes down on these wheels and if if the cover is too tight it uh, yeah it interferes with the movement of the wheels yeah so uh, that's what it looks like inside so this is the denominator adding machine from uh, yeah around 1950 until the yeah the 1920s. Thank you for watching.